Good day and welcome to another episode of In the Spotlight. I'm Superintendent Michael Richard and today I'm pleased to be joined by School Resource Officer Robert Wise. Rob, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. No problem at all. Why don't you start off, tell the audience at home a little bit about yourself, where you grew up, where you went to school, how you ended up on the PD. So I was uh, born in New Jersey. My whole family's from Jersey. We're the only ones up here in Mass. We moved up here late 80s. I've been up here ever since. Moved to West Springfield. Went to Posse School. Went to Tatum. Went to the old junior high, Coburn now, and I uh, graduated from high school here in 2001. Went to Southern Vermont College for four years and still came back to West Side. <laughs> um, I started uh, my police career in Northampton. They hired me in 2006, went to the academy, and I transferred down to West Side in 07 and been here ever since. Very good. So about 11 years here in West Springfield. Yeah. Very. So um, you're in your third year. I think yes. now as a school resource officer here at the high school. And, and tell me, what do you think has been the most rewarding part about the job uh, having come from being a patrolman? So you go from, uh, I, I call it like the street level of you're kind of seeing everybody's worst moments uh, and coming in here. So you have to have a different mentality out on the street with that. And coming in here, and you, you don't see that from the kids. Every once in a while you get an issue with a kid where you know it turns out bad and you got to figure it out. But most of the time these kids are in here you know, they're good, all good kids. They're, they're happy to be here. And, and it's a different perspective on the job. And, and my theory on it is that if I can connect with them here first and they see uh, the cop in a better light and that, hey, he actually helped me out. He's actually, I can know I can go to him. That's the great thing I hear, like hear from kids. I, I know I can go to Wise and, and tell him something. He can help me out. Like having the trust with them, uh, hopefully they bring it home to maybe a parent or a family member who hasn't ever really had good ordeals with the police. And they're going to say, all right, well, my kid trusts this guy. Maybe I can trust a different cop when they come in the house. Uh, so I find that's been the most rewarding for me is making these relationships with these kids that bef when I was on the street, I really didn't know we that those relationships were made. And, and it really goes to show that they are. So you're no different really than a, than a classroom teacher because that's all about building relationships with students too. So that's pretty impressive. And speaking of working in the classroom, Last week, I had an opportunity to uh, watch a RAD demonstration uh, in the gym. And, and tell the audience at home a little bit about what, what RAD is and then what role you play in, in, sort of in the program as it develops here at the high school. Yep. So I got certified. RAD is actually it's called uh, Rape Aggression Defense. It's a women's self-defense course. They're for um, uh, preteens, 13 years old, all the way up. Um, I got a, a 72-year-old woman in my class uh, once before. Um, it's, it goes into, it's more than just self-defense. We, we teach them how to punch, how to kick, how to, excuse me, how to get up from um, the ground if you're in a, in a bad position. But what it really gets into is recognizing um, situations that they're in, um, stuff at home, um, you know, like uh, having your bushes um, trimmed down below your window so you can see out and nobody can hide in your bushes, checking your car when you're coming from the mall. This time of the year, the mall is packed, it's jamming, so you might have to park really far away having them recognize situations so that they never or hopefully never end up in that bad spot where they have to actually defend themselves. So it's really about educating and, and, and recognizing and understanding where you are, um, how to keep yourselves out of those uh, predicaments, we'll call them. And if you ever do get into it, how to defend yourself. And I always tell um, anybody who's in my class, I want you to come into the police station and file a report that you just defended yourself quite well from someone and uh, you just need to file a report just so they know someone's out there. But nothing happened to them because they took my class and they, they defended themselves uh, enough where they could get away. Right. So it's that preventative model uh, so that, that everyone is educated. They know what to look for. They're, they're always keeping their head on a swivel, if you would, yes, uh, because uh, it's a dangerous world we live in. And I'm glad you brought up the the, you know, the, the mall parking lot because it is it is a, a, a dangerous spot to be. This time of the year, you think about it, you end up, you know, everybody likes to park right next to Macy's, but this time of year, you are parked in the back corner. It's not well lit, and, and, and people maybe don't think about that. They tend to, you know, I, I want to say people live in their bubble sometimes, and they walk out and, and you know, they can check their car now, like telling people you should check under your car. Well, how do I check under my car when you're walking up just doing one of these? Just, that's all. Sure. Recognizing. Absolutely. So on another uh, sort of preventative model, the, the school district has, we've updated our um, lockdown procedures and our, our mechanisms for protecting students while we're in school. And we've done that through a lot of collaboration with the West Springfield Police Department, surrounding police departments, the Massachusetts State Police. Tell me a little bit about what you've seen in terms of improvements in that process and any feedback that you might be getting from staff and students. 
So we've gone to the enhanced lockdown. Um, so not a whole lot has changed, and, and for obvious reasons, I won't go into details about what we do because we want the kids to be safe around here. But it's great. You know, Mass State Police, it's their model. They have a whole team dedicated to school, all the school safety stuff. They give it to us and say, here it is. We are here to help you. It's awesome. We have, um, it's Westside. Holyoke does it. South Hadley does it. Um, uh, uh, I said South Hadley. Northampton. Um, all the, the towns in Hamden County, most of them in some of Hampshire County, all use it. So we all know the same procedures and the same things. So what we also do is when you when we do the lockdowns, especially here and at the middle school, those towns come and help us out and do the lockdowns. They give their feedback on what they see. Okay, we went into this classroom and this classroom was great. They did everything they were supposed to do. And then you get to the other classrooms where it's like, hey, we had to kind of, um, we don't call it redirecting. We, we give as much positive feedback as we can and say, hey, maybe this would be a good thing to do too. Or there's no negativity behind it. So you get all these other towns coming in and everybody is on the same page. God forbid something happens in another town. Uh, we can go over there and help them out if we had to because we all run on that same exact programming. So, uh, so it's, it's great in that aspect. And on the other aspect, it gives the teachers and the students more um, choices, more about what they can do versus what they can't do, um, more, more ability to act how they feel need be, not just they know they just have to hide and that's it, that's all they do, they're done. There's, they're more involved in it, Good. which I think empowers the teachers and the kids more and they feel like, okay, we can do this. For sure. So, you know, going back to a little earlier, we talked about building relationships. We talked about sort of what you really seem to enjoy about the job, but the job's not without challenge. So what, what, what are some of the more difficult parts about being a school resource officer and what should people understand about your role? I think a lot of the times that my biggest challenge I notice is when you have a kid who you're dealing with and you're constantly dealing with and you bring the family and the parents in. And you kind of see why they're, the child is the way they are. And you want to get the parents on board with you and, and your role and how to better make the kid not only here, but how they can help at home. And I find the biggest challenge is sometimes not every parent's on board with us. They, it's the old, it's, it's my kid, I'll kind of teach them how it is. And, and just trying to explain to them and get through them and say to them, look, we're not here to pick on your kid. We're not here. I don't want to, allow, I don't want to lock your kid up. I don't want to arrest any kid out of here. Uh, for any reason, sometimes it happens, but I don't want to. That's not the point of me being here. It's not just to be the, the bad cop who arrests everybody. It's, 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 I'm a resource. I'm, I'm someone here to help. I can help those families out through the police department and through town, through other mechanisms if they need it, if they need some sort of program or something like that. And I want them to know that, and, and it might draw them to be more on board with us. Or it goes back to what I said before. If, if a kid was struggling and they realize, and, and, and I have relationships with some of these kids that are like that, where they go, hey, Wise, I, I need five minutes. Can I go with you? Yeah, come on, let's go. We'll talk. And that's all it is. It's five minutes sitting in the cafeteria, and they feel better, and they go to class. Um, and if mom and dad recognize that, and maybe the kid brings it home, and like, look, cops aren't all bad. He's actually here to help me. This is some of the stuff he gave me, that if we can change one parent's perspective or guardian, whoever, to then come on board, the kid's going to make out better. The kid in the end is going to graduate, maybe get out of college, maybe, you know, do great things in life that maybe in the beginning, when he first got here, mom and dad were, oh, you know, the cops, you know, the, when I was a kid growing up, they always banged us around and stuff like that. And now they're kind of seeing that other side of it. And if you can bring those parents into, into your side, into your view, and, and show them that there's resources, there's programming, you know, I want your kid to, to pass and go on to college and come back from college and come back into the community like I did, move back home and raise your family here. Um, if we can do that, maybe one parent, maybe two parents a year, we're winning. We're, we're, we're doing something right. For sure. So let's talk about other ways that you engage the community. So you, you're not just here in the building uh, from, from 7 to 2. Uh, rather, you're, you're, you're running some programs outside the school day that impact uh, the community. Tell me a little bit about some of those. I'm here till 3 every day, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> must be the overtime. All right. Ah, oh, okay. So, um, like we just did it on Saturday. We, um, I had 24 kids from uh, Key Club, NHS, other things. We did Operation Santa. Um, so we did Birch Park Circle. This is the second year in a row we've done it. I had 20 some of my kids last year. Um, I hook up with Vicki Connor, who gives us she gave us uh, Birch Park Circle again this year, and we delivered the toys and the food to Birch Park Circle. And on top of it, this year we had members of the Western Mass Roller Derby team. Oh, nice. Who did it with us, too, so that was kind of fun. Um, we also, in the springtime, when the town does their west side cleanup, we do a high school cleanup. So last year, along with Miss Moore's Key Club and other kids, we did the whole outside perimeter of the uh, high school, cleaned it all up. Um, 
The big one that we do every summer is the Junior Police Academy. Uh, this will be our third summer going into it. It's a two-week program for the first uh, week is the younger kids, uh, fourth, fifth, sixth graders. And uh, then we do the seventh and eighth graders the second week. Um, and we run it like a police academy. They do PT in the morning. They're doing push-ups. They're doing sit-ups. Um, we teach them uh, defensive tactics, which is what we learn at the academy. We get the bags out. They punch the bags. They fight the bags. They do other thing. They learn crime scene analysis. We have some of the detectives come up. They show them how to fingerprint. They show them some of the cool things they do to get fingerprints. So that's science-y type stuff that the kids all just flock to that they love to see. Um, this year, we went up to uh, Amherst. And through the Amherst Police Department, they have a ropes course up there, uh, up in the uh, up the mountains. And uh, they took each kid through it and ran them up the ropes and up and down trees and all sorts of stuff. It was awesome. It was great. Zip lines. They had a blast with it. So um, it's run with uh, Officer Johnson, who's the SRO over at the middle school. It's kind of, uh, it was kind of his baby, and I just kind of tagged along with him, and we've been doing it ever since. This will be year number three this year. Um, we have a great turnout. We have to actually turn people away. We have repeats who come back and say, hey, my kid wants to do it again. And we have to tell them, hey, we have so many other kids that want to do it. So I can't complain about that when you have to turn people away. That's it's pretty awesome. awesome. Great to have a waiting list. You, it, there's some other things that, you, um, that you've that you also been engaged in with uh, some education for students. You know, um, Stop the Swerve, I think you participate with the, the DA's office, uh, some mock uh, crashes to educate particularly seniors yep. as they get close yep. to to, uh, to graduation. So you, you're actively involved, and it's really, really outstanding. My freshman year, we did Stop the Swerve, which was through the DZ's office, and we did it for juniors and seniors. And and people say, why only juniors and seniors? Well, they're the ones driving. They're getting their licenses right now. Um, and, and they're the ones that are really out there uh, that, I guess, we, people in the community more worry about. I mean, what do you talk about? The teenage driver is the one that you're more worried about than anything else. And statistically, it's proven that way. Um, and then last year, through the fire department uh, and through the mayor's office, and obviously with the school department, we did the, um, the mock crash. It was awesome. Reds Towing donated the cars to us. I had some of the drama, drama club kids as my actors. Fire department rolled up with all their tools and everything they do, and we treated it like a real police scene. Lights, sirens. It was awesome. We had the juniors and seniors again because juniors and seniors are the ones driving, and it was prom time. And so I, I hope, like, it goes back to if two kids took something from that, we won. It's sure. a victory. So I'm hoping to do something again this year, whether it be Stop the Swerve or a different program, but we'll be looking at more stuff in the spring again. Very good. So, Rob, I appreciate the time you've taken, and you're probably aware of this by now. Uh, every, everyone who's a guest on here gets asked the same question to close out, and that is, mm -hmm. who would you like to see featured in the spotlight? Judy Ferry. Judy Ferry. Judy Ferry. And Judy Ferry is the director of Westside Academy, which mm -hmm. is which was formerly known as the Alternatives High School yep. uh, here at West Westside, uh, and uh, she's been with us for a number of years, and I think she'd be a pretty uh, where my office is presently located she, she, as well. She'd be an entertaining uh, guest for sure. So we'll Absolutely. get Judy. We'll get Judy on the list. It's been my pleasure to be joined today by School Resource Officer Robert Wise, an outstanding guest for sure, and I look forward to seeing all of you in another episode of In the Spotlight. Have a great day.